Hi, welcome back to Wesley Films, the intro and the outro in the same sitting. This video is kind of broken up into two parts. The first part is, is the mechanical stuff that does work, and the second part is the electrical stuff that doesn't work. So I'm going to start with the mechanical stuff. About a year ago, I did the Harbor Freight free valve build, and then I put it on the Miata, and there was always two problems that I had with it. My first problem was is I was reinventing the wheel a little bit. It had already been done, and I was just making it in my own weird little way. So the goal of this project was to create a design that was my original design and could also work and could possibly improve on a few things. And I think I improved on a few of the big problems. The second part of it was the first free valve Miata did okay. Uh, it, it wasn't great, but it did okay. Uh, this addresses all of the problems that I came up with uh, in testing. Uh, we got rid of air, which is the big problem, because air is almost impossible to code for on any sort of reasonable scale. The other thing is we went direct drive, so it's a lot easier to manage, it's a lot easier to code. A uh, lot less moving parts, lost a lot less wear parts. The third part is, is that we have more of a cam profile now. We're still fully controlled valves, so I can adjust by height. I can open and, and shut them at varying heights, varying speeds, everything like that. We got rid of seals and we got rid of the parasitic drag needed from the air compressor. Those are all great. The bad news is, is that it doesn't work, but you don't know that yet. Uh, <laughs> The point is, is that this video kind of serves as me doing this right, me doing this uh, completely from scratch, and kind of putting something together that I don't think anybody else has done. All in all, I'm very happy with the mechanical side of it, so let's go into that. The test bed is an obvious choice. This 79cc Harbor Freight motor is a great little candidate because it's small, easy, and if it explodes, it probably won't kill me, theoretically. This is also the same one as in the butyl acetate video, and if you remember, I used a plastic piston towards the end of that video, um, and I said it was going to fail, and guess what? It did. I finally got it running, and it uh, melted all the way through because, of course it did, because this was a terrible idea. Coming in contact with the ester, the ABS just melted away, so uh, we got some cool things planned on that, but that's not the goal right now. The goal is to solve the valves on this which on the mechanical side is actually kind of the simpler of the two problems. Because I'm kind of designing this from the ground up, uh, I want to do it right. And doing it right is going to take a little bit more time than the three months that it took me to do that project originally. So, enough of me talking, let me talk some more. Uh, this is what I kind of have planned. A few weeks ago I did a headlight adjustment video on the 928 because it has the Euro adjustable headlights and I built essentially a ball screw. Um, it's a little bit more of a specialized version of that, but for all intents and purposes it's essentially a ball screw. This works on a fairly similar idea. This is actually the older version of this file already. I already have an updated one that I'm actually a little bit happier with set up to go on a Miata head. Um, but this one is the simplest as far as both assembly and as far as design. My goal with this was to retain machinability of critical components, and I'm not opposed to changing things around a little bit. But essentially we have a center pinion that spins around in ball bearing guides that are drilled in from the side and are held in with fasteners. That allows for the 10 millimeters of linear motion with 180 degrees of rotation. As with a lot of this, most of the design limitations are sticking within the confines of the valve. That's why I had to go 90 degrees off and have the steppers mounted horizontally. On the updated design, we have the hex being replaced with a spline drive, the gears being switched over to some off-the-shelf hardened metal gears, and in the future, a mo more robust design going down to where it attaches onto the valve itself. And if we take this and attach it onto the driver, it opens the valve up when you turn it. Mechanically, this is actually very, very strong. In its current single acting design, and I'm using that term as I'm still using the original valve spring to push the valve closed, it has the exact same amount of moving parts as a traditional camshaft. There's really no additional wear components 
once I have oil jackets run to everything and it's actually able to create that film with oil pressure. So I've already done a test through a very, very precise method of measuring torque. Ooh, about two pounds. But you also have to overcome the pressure in the engine as that at combustion is happening and as that piston is traveling down, that has to open back up. So I pressurized a cylinder and measured the torque the same way. All right, this is going to be loud. It's about 120 PSI, 130 PSI. with basically no change at all. Brings us to our next point, which is when will it break? Um, so I'm going to, that's the wrong size. I think it's either going to deform the threads and push the studs holding the ball bearings in or strip out that center hex. Uh, both are pretty good options. I give them 50-50 odds. Okay. It actually just cut itself a brand new path right across there which is something okay to start off with one of the best things about this is that the code gets a lot easier because there's only one thing to control and it's direct drive we don't actually need a position sensor outside of a start stop point just to return to zero so if I only want to open the valve halfway, so I have full valve control, I can actually just send it 50 steps instead of 100 steps. So it gets a lot, lot easier when it comes to stuff like that. Anyways, let's talk about the steppers. Um, there's a reason why you didn't see it moving the valve out there on the mechanical side, and that's because it doesn't work, but it could. The fact of the matter is right now, if I wanted to move the valve in and out, I, I absolutely could. There's a few steppers on the market that'll do it. But let's look at the requirements that we need. So my goal is around 6,000 RPM maximum. We have a four stroke engine, so it opens every other revolution. So it's 3,000 times per minute. It'll open about 50 times per second, which means it needs to open at about 20 milliseconds. So why can't a stepper spin as fast as it wants? Well, a stepper works by having two coils opposing each other, an A coil and a B coil, and they charge up. We have a formula to figure out how long it takes to go across one step. We have a current coming in, which we have to multiply by two because it has to charge up and charge back down. We have the inductance, or the rate of the coil of how fast it charges, and we divide that by the voltage. So we have 24 volts, we have about three amps. In these particular steppers, we have an inductance of about 5.4, which leaves us with about 1.35 milliseconds per step, or to accomplish 180 degrees, we have about 135 milliseconds to open up, which is too much. So that means we need a stepper motor that can deliver about three foot-pounds of force, I'm giving myself some wiggle room, and can move about 0.2 of a millisecond per step. So. Does that exist? Does that look right to you? Well, maybe. According to these graphs, there is a motor that will do the speed with the torque that we need. But there's acceleration involved because we're going from a dead stop to very fast and back to a dead stop very quickly. So outside of countless emails to industrial suppliers, we're gonna see. Hi, welcome back to Wesley filming the outro and the intro in the same sitting. This video is a little bit all over the place, I know, but it's really the foundations for a project so we can build from here. Obviously, finding stepper motors that meet our requirements would be great. If not, I can adjust the gear ratio, maybe a little bit faster, but a little bit weaker. Um, and then finalizing a design where actually I can get oil into this system so it'll last longer. Uh, getting some aluminum parts machined. I'm going to stick for right now to the Harbor Freight side. However, I have a few ideas for a test engine. I have so many Miata parts still laying around, so that might be a great idea, but uh, we'll, we'll kind of see. I have, I have a few ideas kicking around. Anyways, I think I'm gonna leave it there. Uh, please let me know what you think in the comments below. I'm always open to suggestions and ideas. And if you like this video, please like, subscribe, everything like that. And thank you very much for watching.